All right, here's problem three, a 22 millihenry inductor and a 145 ohm resistor. They're connected again in series to the outputs of the terminal of an AC generator that has a peak voltage of 1.2 kilovolts or 1200 volts. Again, it's the same questions, except this time we switch the frequency a little bit. At the frequency equals to 1250, what are the voltage amplitudes across the inductor and across the resistor. All right, so right away you can write down that the voltage across the inductor, and again we're talking about the maximum here, is the maximum current through the inductor multiplied by the reactance of the inductor. The voltage across the resistor, always the same, the maximum current multiplied by the resistance. Again, this problem boils down to calculating what is the maximum current. And right away from Ohm's law, applied to AC circuits, we can write that the maximum current is the voltage across the source. Let's just call it, oh, I've already called it something up there. <laughs> Emax multiplied by the impedance. And in this case, the total impedance is the impedance from the inductor added to the resistance and again when you add impedances you have to do our square roots right square root of r squared plus square root of the reactance of the inductor squared and here's our maximum uh, voltage from our power supply so let's substitute in the numbers so you get 1200 here divided by uh, square root, here's 145 squared, plus, uh, it's, remember what the reactance is of an inductor, I max, let's just remember this formula here, and the reactance is simply omega times L, and omega is always 2 pi times the linear frequency. So if I square everything here, I'm going to get 4 pi squared, uh, the frequency squared now is going to be 1250 and multiplied by uh, 22 millihenry. So 22 times 10 to the minus 3. And again, I have to square everything here. So I've squared the 2 pi, I've squared the frequency, now I have to also square the induction. Okay, right, you substitute all the numbers in there. I think I get an I max, if I did everything correctly, equals to 5.32 amps. That's our maximum current now. And again, there's going to be a phase difference between our driving voltage and you know, the current in the circuit. But here we're only interested in the amplitude. So the amplitude of the voltage across the inductor, I know all my quantities now. You simply plug and chug the numbers what I get is 919 volts for the voltage across the inductor, the maximum. And the maximum voltage across the resistor, substitute the numbers here, 771. It becomes immediately clear for question B, do the amplitudes give, uh, add to give the source voltage? The source voltage is E max, which equals to 1200. Uh, you could see right away that this does not equal to VR plus VL. And the reason they don't add together again is because the voltages are not in phase with each other. So at the end, if you want to do a phasor diagram, let's just do it down here at the bottom. The phasor diagram will have a voltage of the resistor along this axis. And that voltage is VR, we calculated it, 771. And we also have a voltage across the inductor. Voltages across the inductor are 90 degrees ahead of the voltage across the resistor. And that voltage is 919. This is always the same. And at the end, if you add those, you calculate the hypotenuse, you are going to get that the hypotenuse, on the other hand, is equal to 1200 volts. Okay, and remember here we had 771 for the voltage across the resistor. And this here was voltage across the inductor. All right, there you have it, folks. There's an AC circuit 
with only a resistor and an inductor. Standard stuff.